G'day everyone, Turbo Tristan here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the finished product of the rear end of the Evo. We're gonna go through all of these incredible Super Pro products, the zinc coating from Baz, and how I managed to score a brand new set of old stock TN coilovers for the Evo. Stick around, I'll show you how we go from this to this. So quite a few weeks have passed since my last video and I wanna show you guys how we got to this process here or this finished product here. So we're gonna go back in time now and I'm gonna show you what I've done and show you how we got to here. Here we have all of the arms that I've pulled out since I made the last video. And this is what they look like before being sandblasted. Absolutely disgusting. Just thought I'd take the chance to show you guys the control arms that have been sandblasted by my friend, Zach. So they've all come back to me just like this. Everything inside, outside has been totally sandblasted. This is the diff housing, or the diff cradle, sorry, not the housing. So I've been using the KBS rust treatment. As you can see, it's absolutely everywhere. Um, it's really runny, sticky stuff. But let's go check out the arms and what they look like once they've dried. Here are some of the arms that I've already painted. And I've already started to fit the bushes into, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. But this is the type of finish that you get. Everything is absolutely perfect. And in my opinion, it's actually like a more hard wearing finish than powder coating. Just taking a break from cleaning up all of the other alloy arms with the wire brush, just to show you guys the progress here with the KBS on all of those other cast iron items. Now these are sealed to perfection with a nice hard coating, which means they'll now never rust unless they get really deeply scratched and it'll only rest where the scratches are. I'm doing several jobs at once. I'm working on the Integra and I'm working on the Evo all at the same time. Check this out though. So this is one just buffed up with the wire wheel, and this is one that's been sandblasted. So I'm gonna do the other one exactly the same as this, so it's all nice and clean. And then I'm gonna try my luck at this guy here. This is gonna be an absolute mission. Uh, and then we can start to press some bushes in. Then I've gotta go pick up my ball joints from Elusive Racing. And I'm just using the bronze wire wheel here, this one. I'll just explain how the bushes work and how to press them in. If you're doing this at home in your backyard, you can get away with most things by using some big sockets. You can use a bench vise, and most of them go in pretty easy. I have a shop press, so I just use that, but I'm just gonna demonstrate here how to do it. In this case, you get two halves of the bush. You can grease them up and push them in either side, and then you can either use your hands or you can use your vise and press in the inner crush tube. This type is quite easy to do yourself. Make sure you use plenty of the supplied grease because you don't want anything binding up inside the housing. You can also take these bushes to a professional shop and have them install them for you. If you're not too sure or you're a little bit uh, concerned, that is the best way to do it because you don't want to mess up anything to do with your suspension or your shiny new Super Pro parts. Now in this case, they're quite simple to press in. You can do these by hand, each side. Just like so. And then you're gonna need the vise to press this guy in. Actually, it turns out I'm a brute and I could get it in by hand. 
rinse and repeat that on the other side and then you can clean it up once it's all done. Alrighty, check these guys out. These look absolutely amazing. I could not be happier with this. I've been so excited to get these into the car. The polishing of the alloy arms and the alloy subframe look amazing. The bushes stand out. They look fantastic, which is definitely important. And they're gonna help the car handle better. It's gonna feel better. The diff's not gonna slap side to side when I go around corners. The wheels aren't gonna scrub on the guards, which I've lipped, even with them lipped before they were scrubbing still around corners. And the KBS is gonna prevent everything from being rusty. It's nice and hard wearing. It's gonna last a lifetime, but check out these Super Pro bushes. They just look absolutely excellent. Everything is gonna just handle absolutely perfectly. I could not be happier with this. Thanks so much, Super Pro. You guys are the best. I love these bushes. Cheers. Now, for those of you guys who follow a lot of builds on YouTube, one guy in particular in the States, Tommy F. Yeah, he loves to do zinc coating on absolutely everything. He's had a few Evo 4s, so you've probably seen his work. He's now doing GTRs, which I'll get to again one day. But check out these. I like gold. They look amazing. Thanks so much, Baz. These are incredible. Can't wait to get them in the car. And this is all thanks to Baz. Now I'm gonna put a link up here showing his Facebook page. If you're interested in restoring your JDM car, especially if it's a Mitsubishi, he can help you out with zinc coating all of your factory bolts, cleaning them up, getting all the threads absolutely perfect. Uh, these are the same bolts that came out of there. They look absolutely brand new. He can help you out with cleaning up the underside of the car, which is what I've done. I did this one myself but all with Baz's advice. He's got a shop here in Springvale that does all of this sort of stuff, including custom fabrication. Uh, he can organize tuning and he can also organize upgrades, ECUs, a lot of OEM genuine parts, engine rebuilds. He knows everything about Mitsubishi's, the 4G and the V6 twin turbo. I'm gonna say 6A, but I'll, I'm probably wrong. So check out Baz's page, go and like it, comment, and also tell him I sent you. I'm so over the moon. I've never had any products this nice for a restoration, putting a car together. Normally what I do is soak the nuts and bolts in a bit of degreaser, slosh it around, let it sit for a couple of days, and just wipe them down and stick them back in again. This is a whole nother level. Every single one of these, is zinc coated back to brand new. These things, you can still see they're slightly pitted. And that's because these were so crusty with rust. And now, even though they're a little bit pitted, they look absolutely brand new now. Better than original. I'm gonna start to put some of these things back together. Start to put the bottom of the car back together up this end and use all this awesome brand new hardware. I'm so excited to do this. I've been chomping at the bit, uh, talking to Baz every day about this. And yeah, when I saw them, like he sent me a few photos, when I saw them, I was just like, man, this car is gonna be next level build for me. So if you wanna elevate your builds to the next level, give Baz a shout out, talk to him. You can drop his, your nuts and bolts off and he can do it all for you, or you can drop the car off and he can do a nut and bolt restoration just like this for you at home. So check out link right here. Go to his Facebook page, like it. Thanks, Baz. Appreciate it a lot. Can't wait to get the Evo back over to you so we can do some intercooler piping and such and make a new air intake and get it all sorted. But thanks, mate. Thanks again. So we're whacking everything back in the car, but I just wanted to show you and talk a little bit more about the Super Pro bushes that we have went with here in the Project Crankwalk Evo. There's a bit of a sneak peek for a future episode but we're doing the back and then we're doing the front. We're gonna keep these arms just aside for now because I've still gotta do the front of the car. So I'm just waiting on two extra bushes to come in. 
And I've also just picked up the ball joints, which are going to go in all of these spots here. We've gone with the full sexy Super Pro bush kit all throughout the car. It's gonna handle amazingly. It's gonna feel amazing. And because they are solid, but also urethane, it's not gonna to be too noisy or anything like that on the road. It's gonna be really, really nice. Um, they all come kitted out, packaged up, so every kit gets you one pair. So you buy a kit of the front bushes, you get the front arms, you buy a kit of the back ones, you get the back arms, and then so forth. So every kit does one component of arms. We even have the diff bushes down here. This is gonna go in very soon. These are gonna really be a game changer because as you saw before, I'll throw a clip in. The old bushes were absolutely clapped out to the point where the person who tried to fix them the dodgy way put silicon everywhere and totally ruined underneath the car. I've went ahead and I've polished up the alloy arms. So these look amazing. That was done just with a wire wheel on my grinder. So just very lightly, not even touching or putting any pressure on, just dragging it across there and cleaning up everything. And that was after they were sandblasted from my good friend, Zach. We have the adjustable Super Pro rear sway bar links because the old ones were that rusted that I had to cut them out. Uh, so we're gonna use these being alloy in the center and being all brand new and coated. We're not gonna have any issues with rust. But yeah, these look absolutely amazing. This is the KBS brush on. It's a self-leveling compound and it dries really rock hard. It's kind of like a ceramic coat or, a, or powder coating, but I think it's even harder than powder coating because I've actually dropped a couple of these and not a single scratch or chip on any of these surfaces. So they're absolutely amazing. So just because we have a certain amount of space to work with here, I'm doing the back half of the car first and then moving on to the front half. So I'm gonna press in all of these ball joints, which we'll talk more about in just a second. And then we'll put all these arms in for now before I refurbish the hubs, the bearings, the brakes and the drive shafts. They'll come in at a later date. Once again, shout out to Super Pro. I'm so over the moon with these bushes. I've always wanted to do a full bush kit in a car and we've got the best of the best. Uh, these are an Australian company and they're from Queensland. Best of the best quality stuff you can possibly get. I always say, if you need to fix or replace anything on your car, always upgrade it, which is why I went with all of these bushes and I didn't put standard ones in. Um, so we've upgraded everything underneath the car now. It's gonna be brand new, better than OEM. This is a next level build on the channel. So thanks so much to Super Pro. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Not just Honda parts. The guys have everything here, exhausts and engine parts for all models. They even tune some Evos as well. So check out Elusive Racing for your Evo stuff as well. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is ball joints. Now we've gone to Elusive Racing, seen Raf, Kenny, Andy and the gang down there and we've grabbed a set of hard race ball joints. We've got the roll center adjusted front ball joints and all of the rest of the ball joints here to go in. Now they'll press in and circlip in. Better than OEM, brand new. This thing is gonna be mint. But just so you guys know, Elusive Racing do a lot of work on Evos. They do a lot of work uh, with all sorts of cars, WRX, even Volkswagen, Audi, Merck, BMW. They've had heaps of stuff in their shop recently. So check out their page on Facebook elusive racing you see all the stuff that they stock parts for and work on and modify so really really handy to have these guys just around the corner and the evo build can continue here we have yet another piece of the puzzle for the evo yep we're going all out we've got some tn 
coil overs here. These are brand new, new old stock. I managed to find these. A bloke I know had a warehouse full of JDM parts. He's actually got quite a bit left to clear. There's another set of these as well available. If anyone wants them, let me know. But this is legit from Japan, TN coilovers, full JDM imports for the JDM imports. So I'm gonna assemble these and stick the back ones in just due to space. Even though the car's not gonna be on the ground for probably a month or so, I just wanna clear space out and get things up in the car. If they're in the car, then they're off the floor and everything's much cleaner. So I'm gonna assemble the rear set of shocks and springs and get those up in the back of the car. As you guys have just seen, we've totally refurbished the fuel tank that's inside and out now. The next thing we need to do is refurbish the fuel pump. I'm not sure what kind of fuel pump was in here. It seemed to be performing reasonably well but we are gonna increase the boost, the power, the injector size, and go over the whole fuel system, which includes fuel rail injectors and fuel pressure regulator. So we're gonna upgrade this one now. And to do that, we'll be using a Raceworks EFP501. These guys are on the Spool Up website. This is a 340 liter per hour fuel pump. So most people are pretty happy with a 255 pump in here. Um, we're going with a 340. Inside the kit, you get a brand new fuel strainer. Of course, you get a brand new pump. Uh, this one's a 38 millimeter diameter and it's got a uh, eight mil hose end on there. And we've got the new plug here. So rip this guy out and make sure she's going to fit, which it looks like it's Pretty similar, slightly larger and taller than the OEM one. And the next thing to do is to carefully pull all this apart. Now I have treated this so that all of the rust and all the scale and everything's off there, so it's in really good condition. I'm going to uh, just undo these clamps here and hopefully that I can finesse this out. I might need to undo this screw here just to drop the bottom away. We'll see how we go. Never done an Evo pump before. Sure, it's pretty easy. I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment once I've pulled it all apart. Okay, so it was really, really simple to do that. There was just a Phillips head screw on the back. Undo that, the base comes apart, and then you can simply pull out the old fuel pump. Now this one and the new Raceworks one is exactly the same dimensions. Uh, and funnily enough, it just plugs directly in. So I checked the black wire goes to the black, and the, this one is blue instead of red, so hoping I've got that the correct way. Um, all I need to do is just replace it exactly how it was. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna replace the fuel hose. This hose has been on there for around about 27 years, so we're gonna replace that with some new hose. I'm gonna cut this one to the exact same length and we'll finesse that on there, it's gonna be tight. This one was all swollen and saggy so we'll need to just replace this hose here and voila brand new raceworks fuel pump all installed 340 liter per hour fuel pump ready to go back in the freshly refurbished tank this thing is not going to know itself because it's all going to be brand new and lastly just chuck back in the fuel pump Lastly, there's just two more things I need to button up here. One is the hose from here to here and here to here. And that is the system that sort of sucks the fuel back and forward across each side of the tank. Don't ask me how that works. I've had a look at it. I've tried to figure it out. It's witchcraft, but basically the return fuel comes in somehow activates a little vacuum pump there and it sort of sucks up like a straw through there and filters back into the swirl pot.
Due to space constraints, I've decided to tackle the back of the car first. And then once this video is out, I'm gonna get stuck into pulling the front apart. We're gonna have to pull all of this stuff apart and do the same treatment there. We're gonna use the KBS treatment on all the subframes, get them sandblasted, rust treated, and all the nuts and bolts zinc plated courtesy of Baz. We are going, I'm gonna go full Baz, full Tommy F year specs underneath this car, every nut and bolt zinc coated. And I think you'll agree, this just looks absolutely brand new compared to what it used to. I refurbished everything. I've still got a cover to put back on here, which I'll do later on after I bleed everything. We've replaced the lines here with HEL braided lines. Much easier to get to and get undone. And easier to get to the bleeding up there as well. Space to get the spanner in there. I've also got some brake lines, which will be coming in a later video. And I've also refurbished the tail shaft. We've got to get the drive shafts done. We can slap it all back together and get it back on the ground. I've totally pulled apart all of the rear knuckles the drum brake setup. So this is gonna be some before on the wheel bearings and everything. Look how crusty and rusty that is inside there. So we're gonna blast all that out, make it all nice. Every single speed sensor snaps. I've got to drill and tap those and replace those. This is a big job, but I'm actually smashing through it fairly quickly considering but I'll also make sure that I don't just do weekly update videos. I'm gonna do completion update. So when things are done, finally, like the rear end of the car, we'll be able to show you a whole video on that. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. A massive, massive shout out to Super Pro Bushes. This is one of the best things that's ever happened to the channel, getting them on board for this build. And we've got some sway bars to come in the future. We'll do that when the car's closer to getting on the ground and we've got the front and the rear done. So sway bars to come. If everyone likes this video and shares it and says thanks to Super Pro, maybe they might help us out again with some extra sway bars for the car. I don't really want to put the stock ones back on. Uh, the front one, when everything's out, it's kind of a must do or die. Uh, mission in the front because it's pretty much impossible to change the sway bar once the engine and everything's back in. So I really want to get some sway bars. I really want to get a front sway bar and the rear one we can upgrade at any time, but why not do them both at the same time so everything's brand new when we chuck it back on the ground. That's going to be it for this video. Super stoked, tons of work done. So don't forget, spool up, Bring the boost and we'll see you in the next video. Hit up spoolup.com.au to grab yourself some merch or some car parts. All of the parts I use in my builds are on the website. So jump in there, support me, support the channel and support the builds. Cheers.